Hell yeah, where's the fish at? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Let's see. I'm doing pretty good here. How's my audio? Somebody give me an audio check. Good ACDC riff. Yeah. How's my audio? Anybody hear me? Please tell me it's good. I'll wait in the chat. For a response. Good? Man, I cannot believe it. Finally, something went right today. So, loud and clear? Good. Uh, don't be making fun of my bald head. Nobody in there. <laughs> I'll ban you from the chat. <laughs> All right, tonight, I figured I'd go live because um, I really ain't had no luck fishing whatsoever so went out there friday water was uh extremely cold not one bite just sat there pretty much just watched these couple girls in a bathing suit run in the water and then run the hell out real quick <laughs> so we got keeping up with the hackets david sang brandon o'neill ej skip what's up mike billing Get Social Butterfly, Adam Barfield, and somebody had to mention a uh, Whataburger in there. I've seen that. So tonight, we're going to discuss a little bit about fishing, YouTube fishing channels, um, and I'm going to show you a lot of the camping gear that came in the past two weeks and show you what I got, trying to make it comfortable for my sister out there because she, uh, she don't like to rough it. So. Um, so anybody catch any fish at all in the past week or so? We got 17 viewers and only one like. You guys got to hit that like button. Hit that like button. That way it gets out. <laughs> she said, oh, oh, hush. Yeah, we'd be roughing it out there with uh, just showing up camping with just our fishing poles and some water and that's it. But. She's got to have the steak, shrimp, um, sausage and eggs, coffee, and all that other stuff. What's up, Stephen Reynolds? How's it going? I'm going to take this off and get me a hat real quick. Hold on. I don't know about that hat. Let's try another one. This is the hat. <laughs> This is the hat I'm going to be wearing while I'm cooking all these fantastic meals for my sister out there camping. You see this, sis? So you know you're going to get some good food. All right, be right back, guys. All right. Grab me a hat so you guys don't stare. The light doesn't shine off my head here. Got to have some food. Yeah, got to have a lot of food out there. We're going to have uh, steak and shrimp the first night. And uh, second night, we're having, what is it, fish head soup and then the catch of the day. If we don't catch any fish and I got some chicken quarters that we're going to be cooking up on the, uh, the open fire. Not the grill, but on the open fire. All right. So we have 22 people in here and we only have uh, eight likes. If you guys can hit that like button so this will get sent out. Um, so as you've seen the title, how I spent $17,000 on YouTube in one year and only made 2,600 bucks. That is the God, uh, God's honest truth. I'm not kidding you, but I'm hoping it pays off in the long run. That includes the rooftop tent, the trailer, 
all the fishing gear that I've gotten, uh, the mods for the Jeep, new cameras, new sound equipment, um, new computer equipment, and pretty much everything. It was when I started doing my taxes and adding all this up, all the write-offs, I was like, oh man, I cannot believe I spent that much. And I only made $2,600 off YouTube, guys. So that'll tell you right there. <laughs> You're going to start a YouTube channel. You're not doing something right, Truth said. Hey, I don't know what it is, man. I try to do everything right, you know. I, I, I believe I'm the only fishing channel that, that you know, I don't, I don't know how you say it, that puts it together with music and scenic shots with drones. I mean, drone following the vehicles and stuff like that. I haven't seen any other YouTube channel like that. Um... Yep, subtracting the write-off. Yeah, because when I started doing my taxes, it said I owed twenty eight hundred bucks, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not giving the government twenty eight hundred bucks when I really did not make a whole lot of money. Um, you have to catch catch fish, bud. Yeah, I'm trying, man. I think this year is going to be a lot better. This was kind of a rough year because of the freeze. Uh, I was not able to catch hardly any fish on lures except for like the um, DOA shrimp. Um, I usually use a rooster popper, and that is what I've caught all the big fish that you guys have seen throughout the video. Um, also, my work schedule's changed where I'm working anywhere from 50 to 60 hours a week, sometimes six days a week, so that's really affected me getting any videos up for you guys and stuff like that. So a lot going on. I'm trying to make as much money as I can make so I can buy a house by this time next year. Um, and still try to run this YouTube channel. And it's been really hard. Ended up getting COVID probably the end of um, January. So I was off of work for two weeks. They wouldn't let me come back for two weeks. So, And DJ says your production is really good, bro. I just think you should diversify your fishing locations yeah you're right on that and the reason why i don't go too many places fishing like piers and stuff like that is if any of you guys ever tried to shoot a youtube video um it's really hard to shoot a video around a bunch of people like on a pier you know when you're holding the camera up here uh they're just sitting there staring at you and and i still haven't gotten used to being able to shoot a video with people around it's really 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 hard no matter how much i tried to get it done it's just hard so that's one of the reasons why i don't go to piers and places where there's a lot of people um i'm still working on trying to get used to shooting videos around other people and stuff like that but it's hard man and it's and when you got that many people around you they come up and ask you you know you got a youtube channel this and that so it's really hard to shoot a video that's why i kind of go to secluded places or places where there's not that many people. Um, and it's, it's really hard. So um, I would love to fish piers. I would love to fish a lot of places that I haven't yet. But when it comes to YouTube videos, it's really hard to shoot those videos with the amount of people that are in those spots. For example, you take, um, what is that, horse collar? Cobwell Pier, that's pretty packed. Any of the piers are pretty packed, so it's really hard to shoot a video. Um, I'm working on getting another kayak, one with a motor this time, and that one is right around twenty eight hundred bucks, and that doesn't include the battery. So another two hundred and I think it's two twenty for the battery. So you're looking at three grand just for a kayak that I think I will enjoy a lot more than my last one. Uh, I'll be able to go out there and winds, not real high winds, but, you know, 15 to 20, I could probably do it. All right, let me read some of these comments. Somebody says, I hope to be as big as you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that big, man. I'm telling you, YouTube is not easy, guys. It takes a while to get subscribers. It really does. There's people that watch my videos, but they just, for some reason, don't subscribe. So, uh... You ever thought about wade fishing? I do wade fish sometimes, but I've just not had any luck, especially this year, man. Um, I'm new to Corpus. I've been coming down here all my life, but I'm new as far as living here. 
And so I haven't found all the good spots yet. Um, and as time goes on, I'm going to find good spots now. Yeah, I see they knocked down Indian Point. Now, I didn't know that, but the last time I tried to go there, it was actually closed down. That's terrible, man. You know if they're going to rebuild it or not? Because supposedly that was a really good spot. I just never got the chance to get over there and try it out. Um, I would like to do a lot more wade fishing. I just got to find the right spots. And, you know, I get people all the time tell me, you know, have you gone here? Have you gone here? But when you're shooting YouTube videos, you kind of go where you know you're going to catch some fish so you can get some content up. So that's another big problem, too, why I don't stray too far away from certain places on the surf. I have a couple of favorite places in the bay and stuff like that. Because I only have, with me working, you know, if I work 50 hours a week, that's five days a week. And on the weekend, I only have two days, one day to shoot the video. It takes me about 12 hours to edit the video. So I, I got to go somewhere where I know I'm going to catch some fish. <laughs> Oh, you just noticed the building was gone? Yeah, I haven't been over there in a while. Locate, located, have a Jeep Rubicon. We can go to places other, others can't go. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I mean, like you guys in the chat right there, if you, if you want to go fishing together, you want to go fishing with me or something like that, hey, I'm, I'm all up for it, man. You can hit me up um, on Facebook, the Texas Beach Bum. Uh, you can hit me up at, on Instagram. I think it's TX Beach Bomb on Instagram. Well, it actually shows it right there on the screen. Um, so Instagram is Texas Beach underscore bomb. Uh, Twitter is Texas Beach Bomb. No, yeah. And then uh, what else I got? Facebook is Texas Beach Bomb. You guys can hit me up if you want to go fishing or something like that. I am working a lot of hours. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to get out there. and. Like I told you guys before, my main goal is to get my own house. Right now, I'm renting this house. Come the end of May, I don't know if he's going to renew the lease or what. So I may be looking at moving or living in my rooftop tent. <laughs> That'll make an interesting uh, YouTube video uh, channel, living out of my rooftop tent. But I, I really don't want to do that. But if I have to, I will. Um yeah, David's saying COVID was pretty rough for me this time. The first time that I got it, and I never got tested. I'm pretty sure I had it because my daughter had it, and I had the same symptoms as she had. This time around, it knocked me out. Now, I didn't have any chest problems with my chest or anything. It felt like a real severe flu, and uh, it knocked me out two weeks out of work. So it was pretty rough. Um, all I did was take... NyQuil, DayQuil, and Tylenol. I got a temperature up to 105 degrees. So it was pretty serious. But I survived. And, um, you know, I don't want to catch that again. But it just reminded me of a very, very, very serious flu. So thank God I didn't get any of the chest, you know, the, the breathing issues or anything like that. Uh, never went to the doctor, never went to the hospital. I did call the doctor and course they're not gonna let me come in so they just told me to drink plenty of fluids and uh and just get rest so uh where are you located mike billing my sister just answered answered you corpus christi so um uh, you know a lot of people comment on my vid videos and and say how i make corpus christi in the area look beautiful i try my best ma'am i try my best if i'm not trying to make it look beautiful in the videos i'm out there on the beaches picking up trash and um, in the bays, picking up trash that other fishermen leave and people that go to the beach leave. So I try to do my part here. It is a really beautiful town. And I know some of you guys that are local here, that lived here all your life, you may say otherwise, but um, if people just clean up after themselves, it wouldn't be so bad here. It really wouldn't. Um, so again, I, I would love to put two, three videos up a week, but guys, I got to get to 10,000 views per video. That is my goal, to get 10,000 views per video. If I can get to 10,000 views per video, I think I can manage to do this full time. Therefore, there'd be a lot more comment. All right, we got 11 likes, so if nobody's hit the like button, please hit the like button. This is not going to be a very long stream, so um, I haven't streamed in a long time, and one of the reasons why 
is because it takes so much time to create the stream. I got to do intros and, and stuff like that. And usually I'll have a trivia during the stream. I don't have one tonight and um, stuff like that. But it's, it's just like creating a video pretty much. But I enjoy live streaming. I really do. It's just really complicated to get everything set up and working correctly. I mean, I don't know if you guys, you can see part of my setup right there, you know, right back here. But I've got three screens in front of me and wires galore. I mean, cameras, one here. I usually have one back there and I'll have one up there. But tonight I'm just running one camera. Uh, it's a lot of work to live stream. And I appreciate you all, all you guys coming in here and joining the live stream. We have 19 people. If you're new, please hit the like button. I appreciate it. I really do. Um, so if you guys have any questions about anything or want to talk about fishing spots or anything like that, I know fishermen don't like to give their spots away. Um, I understand why, because I said something about one of my spots and now I could hardly get there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. It's kind of you know, you want to tell people where to catch fish, people that come down here from Austin, Dallas, and stuff like that. But then again, you want to be able to go fishing on the weekend when you can get out there. And, it, and when you pull up and there's a vehicle there, it's like, oh, man, where am I going to go next? But um, Jet, Jet Mech says he's been catching plenty of flounder near Boat Hole. Man, I love flounder. That's one thing. I, I caught one. But I made a mistake and lifted it up out of the water while I was still on the surf, and it fell off. But flounder for me is, it seems no matter how I try to catch them, it's hard to catch. I'm probably just not fishing for them the right way. Uh, but I'm going to be researching a lot into that because that's my favorite fish. Um, and then I'm going to talk my sister into going flounder gigging again um, here soon. Stuff like that. I saw Redfish was $25 at HEB. Thought about you. <laughs> Are they whole, man? So I can go buy one and shoot a video and say, look what I caught, you know? I ain't like that. I know some fishermen do that. Some YouTubers do that, but I don't do that. Slow bounce off the bottom, paddle tail or shrimp lure. See, the one I was catching was, um, or the what I was using was a, uh, oh, what's it called? What's it called? It, it looks like a little minnow. It's got this green tail on it. I mean, it's real popular down here. Can't remember what it's called, but that's what I caught it off. And it's probably about plastic is about that big. Twenty five a pound. That's a lot, man. That is a lot. Yeah, the city should award you the Citizen Medal of Recycling for two thousand twenty two. <laughs> yeah. They should, man. Cause I haven't been out to that one spot where I got five bags of trash on that wall yet. I'm afraid to go out there. But I drove by there the other day on 361. I could see it from the road. You know, they had a big old backhoe over there, and it looks like they tore that wall down. I hope we could still get back there, man. But I got a bad feeling we're not going to be able to get back there no more. Still drinking water, man. Haven't had a Coke in, I don't know, six, seven months. I did screw up and get a Mountain Dew about two weeks ago. Every once in a while, I might get a Mountain Dew, but I'm still drinking water. Uh, let me see. Go During springtime, the jetties get super good. Yeah, they do, man. But like I said, the only problem with the jetties is I have a lot of camera equipment, man. A lot of camera equipment. I, just, I don't just carry one camera. I carry a Canon M50. Canon G7, like five GoPros ranging from Hero 9s with wide lenses on them to uh, Hero 8s. And then I think I got one Hero 5 that I used to put in the water. Um, so, and then I have my poles, and then I have my tackle, and then I have my drone. That's a lot to carry out there and try to walk up and down those slippery rocks, you know. I love fishing at the jetties. I really do. I mean. I bought these three ounce silver spoons. I bought a whole, I think I bought like 24 of them. And uh, I want to go out there and throw that uh, three, I think it's a three ounce, yeah, three ounce silver spoon. I want to go out there and throw it in the spring because I know I'm going to hook 
cook something big. And for you guys that watch Thresher Fishing, uh, he's had multiple videos where he's went out there throwing that spoon and bringing in big old reds and stuff like that. But you guys got to understand, he's been here his whole life, man. He's also, also got a, a skiff and stuff so he can get out on the water. Uh, he's been doing the fishing channel a lot longer than I have, so he knows this area. So if I knew this area, I'd probably catch a lot more fish. We can go when we stay at the condo. Yeah, we can go because Brandon will be down here. That's another thing. My son, my oldest son, is coming down in May with his girlfriend. And so you guys are going to see a lot of videos. I'm off for like five or six days. You're going to see a lot of videos of him in it, fishing, and my sister, my mom. I don't know if my mom is going to fish or not, and his girlfriend. So there'll be a lot of different content. Speaking of content, the camping uh, trip has been postponed because my sister is afraid to get a little cold. <laughs> so, which is not a big deal. I don't really care for the cold neither. It's supposed to be chilly next weekend for start of spring break. And uh, so we put it off for the following weekend where it's going to be warmer days and not as cold at night. Um, so that I believe that's the 18th, 18th, 19th, 20th. We'll, be, we'll either be camping on Padre Island or we're going to camp in Port Aransas, I guess, with all the spring breakers. <laughs> so look for that content because I'm going to be off for like 10 days, the whole entire spring break. So I'll be able to get some really good videos and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to start doing some flounder gigging and, and stuff like that. And um, now I'm going to attempt, you know, I can make steak and shrimp with no problem. But there's, um, what's it called? A bush bushcraft omelet. And then it's a bunch of different stuff. So what you do, since I've got that refrigerator freezer to save on space, I've got these little things that you put in this cup here. And you pour all your eggs in a cup, and then you store them in your refrigerator. And it, I think this 20-ounce bottle will hold five eggs. So I bought these little collapse, collapsible funnels to, uh, to store all my eggs in. Uh, and then pancake mix um, you could store in the bottles already. So a lot of the stuff that I am going to take out there to cook is going to be already pre-mixed in the bottles save space and uh you know it's gonna be there's quite a few things that i'm gonna be cooking for the first time i've never cooked like fish head soup i've never cooked that before so we've actually got to catch the fish that day in order to get the fish heads and get some of the fish meat and uh my sister volunteered to try it first so i'm gonna go ahead and let her try it first um so we'll see how it goes I don't know. People are messaging me. Oh, there we go. I guess somebody messaged me on Facebook or something like that. But uh, so she she agreed to yeah Betty Crocker with with a chef hat. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be out there wearing that chef hat and uh, cooking up some good food for you. Believe me. And uh, so all this is going to be new to me as far as cooking on cast iron and cook, cooking on an open flame. I um, also bought a bush crafting knife. I thought I thought I brought it in here, but it's out in the Jeep. A really nice knife. It's about that long. And uh got a fire starter on the what's it called? The sheath where you put the knife in. It's got the um ferro rod on the side. And but I've got another ferro rod in here that I'm gonna use as well. And then I'm going to use these little things down here. As you guys know on the beach, it's a little bit windy, so I'm gonna use these things right here. To put at the end of the ferro rod and hopefully get a fire started out there. I've never started a fire with a ferro rod, so this will be the first time. I've got so much camping gear all around me to show you guys that I can't even hardly move. I broke one thing, all right. So first, we let me read the comments. What are some good jetties other than Packery and Port Aransas? If you go to, you're familiar with uh, Fish Pass jetties, Adam. They're uh. If you go to Beach Access 2, take a right, then go to the beach and take a right, go all the way down to you can't go any further. There's fish past jetties down there. 
Now, back when I was a teenager, it used to be really good. You used to be able to catch a lot of big fish off that jetty. It's a short jetty. It's not very long. Um, then in the first year I moved down here, about two blocks, is it east of Fish Pass? You could catch some big trout. Every day I was catching fish on uh, lures, man. On a rooster popper, papa or whatever it's called. That's what I was catching, all the big reds and the, uh, the trout. The one that's the thumbnail on this uh, live stream, that is a 32-inch trout. That was caught off a, um, some cut ladyfish. And that was cut from that area that I'm explaining to you right there. It was caught from there. Um, Billy Crocker. <laughs> that's funny. You get a award for that one, man. Camping during the summer make you feel grateful for AC that blows cold air. You know, I had that tent out there. And I think it was like 90 degrees that day or 92 degrees that day. And it's in the video where I got in it. It was actually pretty damn cool in there. And the wind was blowing through there and it was pretty cool. Um, so kind of interesting to see, uh, see how it works out. I have, I have not slept in it once and I've had it for I don't know how long, six, eight months. Um, do you have a new boo thing to go fishing with you? Hey, man, I, well... I don't really have a boo thing. I have a boo thing as a roommate, and she's planning on going fishing with me someday. But every time, like I was supposed to take her out to Port Aransas and show her Port Aransas, take her on the ferries, take her out to Padre Island. I believe it was last weekend or the weekend before, and then it got cold. So I figured it ain't gonna be no fun in the cold for her. So I told her as soon as it gets warmer, we're both off work, then I'll take her out there. Right on. Thanks, brother. We are from eastern New Mexico and come down about twice a year. Yeah, if you haven't tried um, Fish Pass jetties, you know, I've I, I seen a guy catch a monster flounder out of there uh, one weekend, but I don't really go down that. I don't go down on the jetties because I haven't had no luck. I usually go, you know, a couple blocks from it on the surf and fish in the surf. That's what's up. What's up, Calvin? How you doing, man? I haven't seen you in a while. All right, so got one lantern, and then I figured this ain't going to be enough, so I got two lanterns right here. So that should be, you know, one for my sister, and that, these are pretty damn bright. Oh, wait, the battery must be already dead. Let's try this one. Yeah, they're pretty bright. And you got the, uh, I don't know what color that's called or whatever. And you got an emergency light. Wait, where is it? Pretty damn bright. Oh, and then you can bring it down low if you want to. So it's pretty cool. I like this one better than the other one now. So now I just got to figure out how to turn it off. All right. So we got the lanterns. I do have a third one, but it didn't work when it came down here, and it won't charge. So they pretty much just said keep it. Um, got the lanterns, and then I got. Well, just go through this stuff with you guys and show you what I got. Can't be camping on the beach without an American flag. So this is brand new right here that we're going to be hanging from the uh, rooftop trailer. Uh, that's one thing. Can't go out there camping without a pirate flag. So got a pirate flag. Uh, and then we got... I got this big old axe in case anybody thinks about trying to rob me out there. <laughs> so when they see me come running naked out of that tent with this thing they better run right and then my sister's got a 150 pound german shepherd so i don't think we'll have any issues out there all right so that's another thing i hear a funny story when i told my best friend that i um bought an axe to go camping on the beach he said why'd you buy an axe i said well for cutting firewood he said there ain't no trees out on the beach I s and i started thinking right he's right well, it's to split the wood. He says, you dumbass. <laughs> the wood's already split when you buy it. But I need it smaller than what it's coming because I got to, if I'm going to start it with a ferro rod, I'm going to have to take the knife, the bushcrafting knife, and kind of whittle it down and get it to where I could start it. So it's a good thing to have, I mean, for protection or whatever. Ever thought about going to that big, beautiful pier in Bayside? Now, I haven't been there, but I'll tell you what, Stephen, I went out to... Uh, Fulton Pier. I actually went out to shoot you guys a video. I was going to do a, a video of the top five fishing piers in this area. 
And I went out and spent the good part almost all day shooting it. Got the drone footage, uh, walked the piers, kind of talking, you know, and stuff like that. Got home and my audio was all screwed up. So that video never happened. Uh, so you've probably watched a little, couple of videos where you've seen some pier shots. That's where it come from. Um, Gary says, God bless you, brother man. God bless you too. And let me see. Do you have a new boot? Oh, I already read that one. Uh, that's what's up, Alvin. Uh, Adam, we give a shot. Thanks. All right. So I also got some kites. Can't go out there camping. You got you got to look like the spring breakers, right? So I got this kite, which is a American flag colored eagle, which is pretty cool. You can actually see the colors right there. So I'm gonna be flying that. And then I have a shark uh, kite. I have not flown a kite since I was, oh, I don't even remember, man, 10 years old, something like that. So that's going to be fun. Then, you know, we got the lanterns and stuff like that. And I've got a light, a big old LED light that's in my tent. So I got some string lights to hang up around the whole camp. And these are solar powered. Just like everything, my refrigerator, freezer, everything I'm going to be running out there is going to be solar powered. And hopefully it'll power it the whole time we're out there. So these are some lights to hang up around the camp, which is going to be cool. All right. So I got all that cookware, which is back there. I've got the Dutch oven, um, some other uh, frying pan that's cast iron. And then I got the master cook station, which is a... A table that's three levels. It's pretty cool. Um, so I started thinking, I, I don't have anything to eat on. I don't want to take the plates out of my house. So I ended up getting me some, this whole set of drinking glasses or whatever. They're stainless steel. And then didn't have any silverware and I don't want to take my house silverware. So I ended up getting this full set of silverware. And you have the stainless steel bowls. And then these are supposed to be the plates, but they're more kind of like a bowl. And I prefer these because that way your food just doesn't fall out. Because you know, once it hits the sand, that's it. It's over with. So got all that. That way everybody has something to put their food on. And then so, you know, I pretty much got everything that we're going to need. Um, you know, somebody mentioned... Uh, we have a toilet. <laughs> we'll give you give her a shot. Let me see. We have a toilet. That's funny. So somebody mentioned, uh, you know, they cooked on the beach one time and they took one bite of their food and had sand all in it and stuff like that. So I started thinking, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Um, my sister don't want to deal with that and her husband. So I'm like, all right, what can I do? So I got me one of these uh, beach win screen which will go all the way up around the fire and where it's cooking now we're going to be using a uh, two burner propane stove sometimes but most of the stuff we're going to cook is going to be on an open fire with uh oak oak wood so this will protect um so i don't get sand in the food hopefully um and then of course, I didn't have anything to cook on an open fire, so I had to get something to cook on an open fire. And as you can see, this right here, let me get it right there where you guys can see it. And that should work just fine for what, what I'm doing, hopefully. Audio's still good, guys. And we haven't... So we got that taken care of. Now I'm like, well, I don't want to haul like, uh, you know, three cases of... 20 ounce water bottles out there so ended up getting me military grade five gallon water container i probably should have got two of these so that's going to be cool right there and that's actually you can actually put that on the back of the jeep on the spare tire there's some kind of adapter that you hook up that this will just go right up against it that's pretty cool all right so after all that, I'm sitting here thinking, what am I gonna, where am I going to take a shower? Just go out in the ocean with a bar of soap or whatever. And, you know, it's kind of like salt water or whatever. 
So I ended up getting some shower bags that supposedly you just put it out in the sun and it'll heat up the water. I got two of them, but one of them I just rolled over while I was moving all this stuff and broke the little nozzle on there. It'll probably still work. Super glue it or something. But that one was actually free, so it's not a big deal. But this one right here, the five gallon? I think it's a five gallon. But anyways, that's uh I think I got everything. That's everything that I've gotten so far to make life a little bit easier for my sister. Me, I just go out there in my rooftop tent and throw some hot dogs on a stick, put it over the fire. <laughs> but she wants to glamp. I guess that's called glamping. I don't know. Oh, anybody catching any fish out there? I ain't seen nobody say, well, one person. But anyways, I just wanted to get online, give you guys a little bit of content, and let you know what's going on as far as why there hasn't been that many videos up. I, I hate, I'm telling you guys, I hate going more than probably four days, five days, and putting a video up. But right now, I really don't, I don't have a choice because of my schedule at work. Um, normally, usually I only work four days a week which would be 40 hours. But here lately, I've been working 50 and sometimes 60, you know, six days a week. Um, so it's very, very hard for me to get out there. You know, if I only have Sunday off, that's the last thing. As much as I enjoy fishing, that's the last thing that I want to do is get out in the sun. And, you know, just I just want to stay home and relax because my job sometimes is pretty hard. Other times it's pretty easy, but... When you're standing out there in the sun or the cold all day long on cement, it's pretty hard. Um, so that's one of the reasons why there hasn't been a lot of content. And believe me, my YouTube channel, channel is suffering because of it. My views are way down. Subscribers are probably half of what I used to get. And of course, money is probably one third of what I used to get. Um, and I don't make a whole lot of money on YouTube. It sure ain't paying for all this. This, this is coming out of my pocket. And hopefully someday my YouTube channel, if it just makes enough money to take care of what I'm doing, I'm happy. But I would like it to take care of everything I'm doing. My house. Um, that way I can just focus on content for you guys. Do it full time because my goal is to start, once I bring in this camping videos, is to start camping at places all over Texas. And then once I go full time on YouTube, I want to start camping all over the United States. Summer, fall, winter, it doesn't matter. Uh, and fishing all over the United States. Not just down here in the Gulf. I want to be able to go to Colorado. I want to be able to go to places. You know, I've been all over the United States. Uh, I've been to pretty much every state except for Alaska. Even Hawaii, I've been there. So that, are, that is my goals right there. How come you don't fish pins more often? Man, every time I go out there, I don't hardly catch anything. And it doesn't matter where I go on pins. I've been as far down as Little Shell and Big Shell. I see people in videos catching fish down there, especially uh, Breakaway Tackle. Uh, what's, his, what's the guy's name? I watch him a lot to get the beach reports. And I watch him catch the Pompano. Uh, Nick, that's his name. Um, I see him go down here, and almost every time he goes down here, he's catching big pumps, big reds. Um, I'm actually going to go visit him. I'm really thinking about, if you, any of you guys have used these, let me know. I'm really thinking about going to get some 12-foot rods from uh, Breakaway Tackle. They're expensive. They're like 200 and something dollars a piece. But there's times when I don't want to get in the water, and I want to be able to cast. Um, as far as when I wait out there, I want to be able to get it out there. I don't want to always use my drone to take it out there because using my drone, number one, it's risky. Number two, it's a lot of work to get the line in the thing just perfect to where it'll drop. And uh, it's just a pain. It's, I'd rather spend my time fishing than sitting there trying to hook it up to the drone and drop it way out there, take a chance of the line hitting the propellers. And so, you know. I'm really thinking about just investing in some 12-foot rods. Um, 
for casting purposes. And from what I hear, the rods at Breakaway are supposed to be really, really good. So if any of you guys got any experience with uh, Nick at Breakaway Tackle, let me know, man. Uh, hopefully I can at least get one by the summertime, but I have some other projects that I'm working on. Like, um, you know, you guys know I got dual exhaust, Borla exhaust on the Jeep. So I've got to finish paying that off. And then I have all this camping gear from the refrigerator freezer to the solar generator to the solar panels. I, I bought on credit. What's up, Maga Mouse and Ronnie? Yeah, Breakaway HDX. That's Ronnie, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm thinking about trying one of those out. Um and specific, specifically having those for surf fishing. Um so as soon as I get the money together, hey, I'm gonna have one. And that way I can get out, cast a little bit further, especially in the winter months when the water's cold. Um, I really don't like getting in there. Um, so get back to what I was saying is um, it's really it, everything. I, I don't I make good money, but I don't make enough to support everything I'm doing as far as I mean, if the camera gear alone can be anywhere for four or five hundred bucks for one camera. Uh, and that's cheap. Most of them are thousand, twelve hundred bucks. Um, so once I get the refrigerator freezer and all the solar stuff paid off, then I'm getting a um, well. I got to work on figuring out how I'm gonna get the kayak. I don't want to have to take my money out of savings that I'm saving for a house to buy a kayak because I don't want to risk it. I know a kayak would be good for my channel and probably increase my views. The problem is I want to be in my own home by next year. I make enough money to do it. And so you guys got to realize what, uh, 14 months ago, 15, 16 months ago, I was unemployed for eight months because of the pandemic. And I used all my savings, moved down here. And uh, when I got down here, the first six months I was unemployed until I got this job, which is the one I was trying to get. Um, so I'm just now building my savings back up um, for the house, for the down payment for the house. Yeah, it's good to see you again too, Maga, Maga Mouse. Vinny says, hey there, good buddy. What's up, man? Hey, you know what good buddy means in the trucking world? <laughs> good buddy ain't a good thing in the trucking world. <laughs> in the fishing world, it is. Uh, my sister says, no more kayak for me. Mine is still under our fifth wheel. Hey, if you've seen this one, Michelle, that I'm planning on getting with the motor, you'd be in that thing in a split second. It's sweet. It really is. Um, it's a lot wider than mine is. Yours isn't as wide as the one I had. This one's wider, and it's more durable, and it's just, it, it's well put together. And uh, the thing is, it's 2800 bucks plus another 200 something for the battery, so you're looking at three grand for that. So, you know... If I made the money on YouTube, I'd take my YouTube money and buy that, but I don't make enough money. That's that three grand is about what I make a year on YouTube, you know, if I'm lucky. If you're counting Amazon, uh, what I make off Amazon, YouTube, and uh, what else? There's a couple other things. You, sometimes you guys donate and stuff like that. That's all combined into that price. So normally it's about $2,600 a year um, is what I make. And that's not a whole lot, but I'm not doing really doing this for money. I'm doing it because I enjoy making um, content. I really do, guys. I mean, it's it when I go two weeks like this past two weeks without making a video. That's why I went live stream today. I just it's hard for me to go that long without wanting to edit something and make a story. I love putting the music together. I love editing the videos. Most YouTubers can't stand to edit videos, but I, I enjoy the hell out of it because you after all day long or two days you're shooting all kinds of material and you get home and now got it all uploaded to your computer, you've got to create a story that people are going to watch. And that's what I enjoy doing. So that's the main reason why I do YouTube. It's not really for the money, but you know, when you see these other fishing channels that are making you know, two, three hundred thousand, four hundred. Some of them make two million dollars a year, uh, making that kind of money off the same thing you do. You're like, yeah. Sometimes I wish I made that money because I would have a really nice boat right now. And if I had a boat, 
I guarantee you I'd be catching fish almost every video. There's no ifs, ands about that. Uh, my sister can tell you what happened to my last boat down here. I actually sunk it in the Gulf of Mexico. And got rescued by the Coast Guard. So that's, that's a story for another day. <laughs> but if I had a boat, man, I'd be catching fish, you know. But see, I don't want to get something like Thresher Fishing's got a skiff or something like that. That's, to me, that's a little too small. I carry way too much equipment to, to be on something that small. Now, if I was just had a GoPro strapped to my chest, and that's it, that's all I was using. I didn't have this high dollar, um, what do you call it, the uh, sound equipment to make sure that if it's 30 mile per hour winds out there, you guys don't hear any wind in my videos. And if I didn't have all that and stuff like that, hey, the skiff would be perfect for me. You know, but when you got, for example, if you're on a kayak with me, and if that kayak goes over, let's say it was a two-person kayak, the amount of equipment that I bring to shoot the kind of videos I, I shoot, I would be out thousands of dollars. One rollover. Even my, my GoPros are not waterproof. You guys are saying, well, GoPros are waterproof. No, do I got the media mods on them and stuff like that. Because I have to be able to hook up my wireless, um, my wireless uh, sound, whatever, you, whatever this is called, my Rode mic system, which this is part of the Rode mic system right here that I use, and plugs into the camera, sits on top of the camera, and then you have this big old box, this thing that goes strapped to your belt, and then you have the mic right here. This is why I'm able to get audio in 30, 40 mile per hour winds without you guys even knowing that it's windy. So, a lot of equipment. Yeah, it sunk. Yeah, me and Craig Johnson on that boat, we both swam all the way to the Port Aransas jetties and got rescued by the Coast Guard in the late October. The water was cold. Um, someday, maybe on a live stream or something, I'll tell you guys the story of what happened on that. Um, so ever since I lost that boat, I, I haven't had one. And, uh, that was the very first time that we ever went out to, into the Gulf of Mexico. Usually we stay in the bays and we'll go on the ship channel, in the ship channel, but we do not go out into the ocean. And we did that day. And of course we sunk my boat. So ain't a big deal. You learn from your mistakes. But, um, so anyways, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I don't go places or I don't have a kayak right now and stuff like that. I have a lot of equipment and able to, in order to be able to shoot the kind of videos I shoot. And uh, I, I, me, myself, man, I, I can't just strap one GoPro and just go out there and just talk and fish the whole entire time. I can't do that. I, I, I would be s severely bored coming home editing a video like that. So um, my style is what you guys see the videos that I create. That's my style right there. Most of the time it involves some kind of music. I love pretty much any kind of music, even uh, Mexican music, uh, just any kind of music. And, you know, my videos are always probably going to have music of some sort and scenery and stuff like that. It's just what I do. Um, thank you, Maga Mouse. Appreciate it. All right, Benny, man, take it easy. Also, I love the flashback content. It was awesome, yeah. Um, but that's why you don't see me going other places uh, is because I usually go where I know I'm going to catch fish, and I don't always catch fish, and usually I won't put up a video if I don't catch fish. Like, I shot one on Friday, and I didn't catch anything, so therefore you didn't see a video. Um, so hopefully that explains to you, you guys, why I don't kind of stray too far from what I know. And then some of the places, the public places where there's a lot of people, it's really hard to shoot a YouTube video around a bunch of people. They just sit there and stare at you. They make you feel uncomfortable. And um, it's hard to do your job, man. It really is. But, you know, someday, hey, I won't even know they're there once I get used to it. But I do plan on fishing the jetties, Port Aransas jetties, a lot more this year. And uh, hopefully we can bring in some big fish. Now, I'm not, <clears throat> I don't always go out to catch big fish. If I go out and just catch fish, I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't have to show you guys a big monster fish every time. I just go out 
to show you guys what I'm doing. For those of you guys that can only get down here on your vacations and so on and so on, you know. If you're like me, before you go on vacation down here, when I used to come down on vacation, get on YouTube and you search places to fish and you watch other fishing channels and you stuff like that. So that's why I do it. I do it for people like that and to make friends, pretty much. Make friends. So um, not everything's about money. All the advice you gave me about my channel was true. Yeah, I... I hope you I hope your channel's doing good, but when you got into that political stuff in your car channel, it's really hard to mix two different things in a channel because most of the people that subscribe to your channel for your car content, they're there for the car content. So, you know, that that can be a bad mistake on a YouTube channel sometimes, you know. So it's kind of like, you know, my channel's fishing, camping, and Jeeps. But if you notice, anytime I have Jeep content up, the video doesn't do very good. So, you know, my channel's a fishing channel. Even though it started out with the Jeep as well, <clears throat> I've got to stick to fishing. And you've noticed in some of my videos, I'll bring in a little bit of Jeep content, but I always have fishing content, usually. And then it'll do pretty good. But yeah, Mega, I, I, Mega Mouse, I, I believe it, man. You were doing that political channel of yours took off, man. It really took off. I couldn't believe how fast that took off. Yeah, Ronnie says my channel has 35 subs. Most of them are family. Dude, that ain't too bad, man. Uh, there's people out there that can't even get two subs. But, you know, it's all, all on what you want to do. If you're just doing it for family and for fun, hey, man. Doesn't matter how many subscribers you got. But if you want to grow your channel, I'm, I'm here to tell you it's a lot of work and it's not going to happen overnight unless, unless you uh, go out and get one of your legs bitten by, off by a shark and you film it and it's all there, then you're going to explode, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, uh, CF says, I enjoyed your kayak fishing. Now, if it wasn't so damn windy down here, it really would have been fun with a kayak. But I just got frustrated. And when I get frustrated with something, that's it. I'm done with it, you know? And so I'll, I told myself it's either going to be a boat or it's going to be a kayak with a motor, either, either one. And it's just the thing about the kayak is I'm just really worried about the amount of equipment that I'm going to have on the kayak. And if I roll over one time, man, that's thousands of dollars. It's going to be just destroyed. And that's why, why I worry about it. I may not spend three grand on a kayak and just go for a boat, but I have to get my own house. So I have room right now. I got a two car garage. I have the Jeep on one side and a rooftop tent trailer on the other side. So I don't have any room for a boat. Um, for those of you guys that know Corpus Christi, you don't want to leave a boat outside. You don't want to leave your Jeep outside with a soft top, um, you know, with an expensive light that's in the inside stuff and you just don't want to leave it outside you want to keep it in the garage um it doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in unless you're you got security gates in the front or security guards or whatever they still climb the fence but um so i'm going to need a bigger garage and i'm going to have to figure out how i'm going to do i really like to put the rooftop tent on top of my jeep but you got to have the soft top down i have the racks up there but the problem with that is it's 118 pounds and it's bulky. It'd be really hard to get off. Um, each and every time I want to use it, get it up there and get it off, I might have to have somebody help. And if it rains, I'm screwed <laughs> because the soft top's going to be down. That's why I bought the trailer so it'll just stay up. Uh, so I got to figure out, you know, when I do get a house, how I'm going to manage to have a boat. And the rooftop tent trailer, because I still got to build that thing out. I haven't even started because the wood prices are so high. I haven't even done the floor. Um, but I'm going to be working on it as soon as the prices go down a little bit. If they do, I'm going to put the flooring in. And then I'm going to build some kind of cabinets and then put something on the front of it to store gear. And then one propane tank store on the front of it. And then I got to get bigger bigger tires and rims for it too, and that's eight hundred and thirty four dollars for two rims, two tires. 
And the reason why I'm going with that is because I want it to match my Jeep. I only want to carry one spare tire. I have a spare tire on the back of my Jeep that would work for the trailer once I get the other two rims and tires. Um, yeah, I've seen some Gladiators. Yeah, Steven. I, I've seen, uh, not a Gladiator the other day, but I've seen a pretty sweet Jeep the other day with a rooftop tent. Same one I got on top of it, and they were they were heading out to Padre Island. Um, and you know, Wallpack says, I've been living in Corpus all my life, and spring and winter are the windiest month. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's been windy down here. 40 mile prior winds. Um, I, don't, I don't go fishing when it's like that. You know, so... I use a braided line, and if anybody knows what happens in a windy day with braided line, well, that's one of the reasons why I don't go. Uh, plus, the surf is really tore up bad, usually when it's windy. Uh, it is windy summer, winter, and fall. Uh, there's a normal breeze down here, what, 10 to 15 miles per hour, usually. Um, but some days it gets 30 and 40. And I heard that the month of May is supposed to be the windiest month in Corpus. So, and that would probably be true because I think I had that kayak in May, last May, and that's when I was having all the issues. Uh, if you guys haven't hit the like button, please hit that like, like button. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. And uh, we're going to be bringing some camping gear or camping videos to the channel. And, uh, I think it's going to be fun. What do you think about keeping up with Hackett? You think it's going to be fun? I got my big axe over there for protection. <laughs> so I think it'll be fun. It's going to be kind of a learning experience. I used to go camping when I was younger and stuff. I haven't been camping in years. Um, and I don't think I've ever cooked on an open fire. So that's going to be the first time I've ever done that. And I've never started a fire with a ferro rod. So... I'm also going to take one of them lighter things just in case we can't get a fire started that I fail with a ferro rod, but I'm at least going to give it an attempt. Um, we also got, I haven't showed you, but I also got a shower tent that my sister bought me uh, a while back. So um, then we got the, we got the awning. Now I've had the awning installed on the Jeep, but I'm actually going to install it on the rooftop tent. I'm going to install it. So the tent will be there and the awning will be out. So we have some shade and stuff like that. Uh, appreciate it, Magma Mouse. Um, I really miss, miss my one LE, man. You know, but I, I, really, I really like my Jeep better. It's hard for me to say that, but I like my Jeep a lot better. And I kind of like the way my life is now. Uh, where I'm at and stuff like that. Mom bought the shower tent. I got the toilet to go on it. Oh, okay. All right. That's also we're gonna we're gonna be taking a shower in there too, so just don't miss the toilet. <laughs> oh Lord, I guess we could just move the tent over, you know. So it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I was really looking forward to going on the 11th, like I'd planned, but it's supposed to be highs in the 60, like 61 degrees. And I think I seen low of 37 one night, 43 the next night. That's a little bit too chilly to sleep in a tent. Now, I have all the blankets in the world, and I have one of those refrigerator suits. But I really don't want to wear that while I'm fishing out there. I'd rather be wearing shorts and a fishing shirt. So that's why we decided to go the following weekend. And I'll tell you, I'm glad I took these off, guys, because I don't know if any of you ever worn headphones and had to talk where you can hear yourself in the headphones but it is it, it, it messes up your speech so uh, I'm glad I got those off and I'm finally speaking normal <laughs> uh, what would you say is the video of yours that got you famous uh, I'm not actually famous but the video that really really uh, is back when I was picking on tall, tall guy car reviews um, is back in my car days, that video skyrocketed and picked me up thousands, uh, pretty much a thousand subscribers overnight. And it was a big drama thing between me and him. He came over to my YouTube channel, made some rude comments and stuff like that. 
but here where I've been fishing and been down here, it's always been my um, my top fishing spots. You know, the best fishing spots in Corpus Christi and stuff. I really like doing those kind of videos, but like I said, I don't want to give away all the spots around here. Uh, I do know plenty of plenty of spots, but um, I may do one more. I just got to figure out how to do it without upsetting people because people get upset when you list fishing spots on YouTube. They really do. I've gotten so many bad comments and stuff like that. But those those videos did really good. I also like shooting videos like uh, I got one about Corpus Christi, the top five tourist attractions or top ten. I don't remember what it is. But I like doing those type of videos too. Um, I really wish I could do some more of those videos. You know, like top spots in Rockport, Fulton area and stuff like that. Um, but they tend not to go over too good on a fishing channel. I got to stay fishing camping and uh, I could slip jeeps in there if it's a fishing video and slip it in at the end or in the middle or something like that if I get a new mod I could probably fit it in there but I can't just do a jeep video like I really wanted to show you guys when I when I uh, polished I um, did a full detail on the jeep I did a clay bar I uh, did some paint correction and I used all, uh, I didn't use ceramic stuff this time. I used some high dollar wax. I think it cost me a hundred bucks for the jar from Adam's Polishes. And I did all that. Didn't shoot a video because I knew it wasn't going to do very good on my channel. Uh, but I really wanted to show you guys how to do something like that. Especially if you got a Jeep and you've been out four wheeling and stuff like that. And getting little fine little scratches in the clear coat. And you would know how to get them out. But you really got to stay to uh, what you do on there, like fishing, you know, because if you create a video like about detail on a Jeep, it's actually going to hurt your channel more and it's going to help your channel. So those, those are some things that I've learned over the years of doing YouTube. Um, yeah, getting subs on YouTube is all about the situation. Uh, some cases it is, but I can tell you what, Mega Mouse, the, the subscribers that I'm picking up now are, are dedicated subscribers. I don't want subscribers that aren't going to interact on the channel, um, you know, where they're just kind of, they're just not going to interact on the, I want real subscribers. A lot of these, you'll see uh, channels with a million subscribers, all right? With a million subscribers, you should be pulling in about, Three to four hundred thousand views per video with a million subscribers, and some of these channels are only pulling in fifty thousand views per video. And so to me, that's that's pretty bad. Um, so if you get true subscribers, one ones, and you stick to what you do, if you have a fishing channel, you stick to fishing, you stick to anything that has to do with fishing, whether it's cooking fish or it's um, uh, equipment for fishing. Uh, just pretty much anything about fishing, you're going to get true subscribers. And, you know, people go two, three, four weeks without watching, you know, a YouTuber and then they'll come back or whatever. But it always amazes me when these bigger channels, they have millions of subscribers, but yet they're only getting 50,000 views per video. You'd think they'd be getting at least four or 500,000 views per video. But, um, uh, not trying to put them down or anything, but it's just trying to explain to what kind of subscribers. You really need to get really good subscribers, ones that interact with you and stuff like that. So, um, like I said, YouTube for me is not about the money. I would like to make at least enough money to pay for what I'm doing instead of, like this year, $17,000 I spent on YouTube here. <clears throat> everything from fishing to Jeep mods to everything. It only made $2,600. $2, dollars So I'm not upset about that or anything because... You know, you have to, there's an old saying, you have to spend money to make money, all right? Some people are lucky enough where they don't have to spend money to make money. But what I'm building on this channel is going to not, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while to actually achieve that goal. And so it's going to cost me money. And uh, hopefully someday it evens itself out. And But I'm having a good time, so it doesn't matter to me, you know? 
it's just fun. It's fun creating content for you guys. It's fun showing you uh, what I do and stuff like that. So that's why I do YouTube. I don't, I don't really, you know, like I said, it'd be nice to make your money back, but I'm, I'm not really, doesn't matter to me, man. It gives me something to do, something I enjoy to do. Uh, hard for sub base, but it's small. Yeah, you need, you know, the key to making your YouTube channel grow is content, is content. If you can get as many, try to get as many videos up as you can a week, the more videos you get up a week, the more views you're going to get, the bigger your channel is going to grow. I mean, I know that for a fact. So that's what's hurt my channel right now. I'm, I'm lucky right now to get a video up every two weeks. And uh, you guys know me. I usually only go, when I get burned out on YouTube, I'll take a three-week break. But I always come back stronger than what I was before. And uh, with my job schedule and everything that's going on weather-wise, and you know, it's been cold. And every time I have off, it's been cold or raining or windy. It's really hard to get content right now. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, it is hard. You're right about that. So anybody got any fish stories or anything like that? Anything they want to say or ask or anything? Hopefully I'm getting a... Yeah, just put one up without catching. Michelle, it's hard to make a video interesting if you don't even bring in one fish. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I went out there and shot the content on Friday, and I uploaded the computer, and I tried to figure a way to make something out of that, and there, there's just no way, man. What's your favorite bait to use for surf fishing between fish bites, shrimp, cut bait, mullet, and goggle eyes? What is a goggle eye? I ain't never heard of that one. I'll tell you my favorite bait to use surf fishing, and that is cut ladyfish or skipjack. That's my favorite bait. Usually, the only time I, I, I... Now, this year, we use fish bites a lot more. Fish bites and shrimp. A lot more than I ever, ever did. My go-to is lures, usually. That's what I like to fish, fish with. And to be specific, it's going to be a rooster popper. And actually, I'm going to bring it up and show you what it is. Give me a second, and I'll bring it up. And show you what a rooster popper is, is that's my go-to favorite thing to use. Man, I was catching, uh, most of the big fish that I've caught have been on that, except for that big 38-inch um, redfish that I caught, that bull red. So let me get this up right, right quick, and I'll show you. Let me uh, get you to the screen over here. Oh, wrong screen. There we go. All right, give me a second, and I'll show you. As soon as I find it, here it is. Now, this is the bigger one, but they, I think this is the 135, but they make the smaller one. Let's see if I can open this up. There we go. That is my go-to thing right there to use when I'm catching big redfish and trout. Um... That right there, it's a top water, and when the surf is is just right for the for the uh, top water, now it doesn't have to be completely calm, but a few waves, it's not going to hurt this top water. That is my favorite thing to fish with right there. I would choose that if the fish, if I go out there and I see some action, you know, some bait and stuff like that, and the water is kind of, you know, it's not bad at all. It's just being like Texas surf. I'll throw that. And um, that's what I like to use. Another thing I like to use, too, when I'm using lures. By the way, guys, I sell all this stuff on my Texas Beach Bum um, website. Another thing I like to use is these right here. These right here will catch you some fish. And I've actually caught some this year off that. That's pretty much the only soft plastic that I've caught or any kind of lure that I've caught fish on. I've caught trout on that. Uh, caught a few reds on that. The DOA shrimp. So this is another thing too right here. That is my go-to. I prefer 
using the clear color than any other color. Um, the other color, I think it's a little bit darker than this. They do work good as well. So that's another thing I use. And he, here is these spoons right here I was telling you about that are good to throw out on the jetties, especially this spring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you get ten of them. And I think, I can't remember what I paid for them. But this is another really good thing. I've not used this in the surf, but I have used it at the jetties. And if you use them on the um, channel side, you should should have some luck. And I'm going to see how much they are. Let's see how much they are. Oh, man, they went way up. They're $37.88 now. I didn't pay that much for them. So they went way, way up. I uh, wish you would teach me how to use those. Uh, you got you got to be able to cast to use those. You you're gonna have to practice casting because you can whip one of those a pretty good ways off the uh, the jetties. So it's the same way you cast um, the uh, pompano rigs and the big four, five, six ounce weight that, that we put on there. So you can cast it the same way. You just whip it really good and it'll fly out there. Um, What's another one? Here's the fish bites. If you want to use uh, the best, is going to be the uh, pink shrimp flavor. Easy shrimp. Those are the best out there. And then you got, um, if you can find this, this is really hard to find. The sand flea, the orange, orange and white or whatever, it's sand flea. Um, well, they got sand crab, mole crab. What, what is that? But usually it says easy flea, sand flea. Those are really nice. They work really good, especially if you're going after pompano. You just take a piece, a little piece of that, cut it off and put it on your hook and then put a little piece of shrimp on it with it and they'll work real good for pompano. Um, let me see how much these are. Actually, see, they're out of them right now i mean they're really hard to get especially in this area here i don't think any of the stores sell them in corpus so i usually get mine either directly from fish bites or from amazon and i can't remember i think they're like nine bucks eight bucks and they also have easy crab as well and that's 5.99 but i think they charge you 350 for shipping this is the one that we're going to be using out uh, when we're camping right here. We're going to be trying this color out. I've never tried pink. Easy shrimp pink. So we'll see how that works. And another thing that I use, guys, especially for pompano, and I have not caught some big pompano, but I've caught a bunch of smaller ones, is go to fish gum and uh, scroll down. And this right here. Now, I thought he would have a thing. Let me go to the catalog. Catalog. There we go. Now, you'll have to wait for this to come from Florida, but it's actually pretty good. So, here it is right here. It's called Fish Gum, and you order it at fishgum.com. Now, that is pretty good. Um, and I don't know how much they charge for this. It's about the same. Yeah, it's seven ninety nine. It's about the same as fish bite. Now it doesn't have that mesh in it, but this stuff works pretty good for um, pompano and also for whiting as well. That's just a few things that I use right there. I mean, there's a whole list. If you go on TexasBeachBomb.com, why isn't that working? There it goes. And you can see all the lures that I use. These are all the different ones that I have that I use, like a diff different colors of uh, the rooster popper. And then I use the marrow lure. That's another good one as well. Right there. So if you like fishing with lures in the surf, marrow lure, rooster popper, and uh, the DOA shrimp. What's up? We go fishing. How's it going? Uh, yeah, you, Mike, I use my drone for casting as well. I'll use that, but it's such a pain. I don't have the electric one because it's like 140 bucks to get that. So mine, it has this little thing where you dial it in, 
you put the line in there and you get it just right where it's not too tight so it'll so the drone will pull away from the line uh so it's just a pain to get that right especially when it's windy out there and um i do use my drone now i used it a couple weeks ago to drop the line out um but these are all the different kind of lures and stuff that i use and then um I used to use these Pompano rigs right here. I don't know if they, if these right here, the cheaper ones you can buy at Walmart. But I use it with two hooks only, not three hooks. These have three hooks. Those are a pain. So I use it with two, but I've been getting lately, I've been getting Salty's Pompano rigs out of Florida. They're a lot more expensive, but they are really, really worth it. Uh, let me see if I can show you what they look, look like. So if you haven't gotten any of these Pompano rigs, um, uh, uh, can't spell today for some reason. If you haven't gotten these and you surf fish a lot, you definitely want to get these Pompano rigs. Let me bring up this Facebook. And they're, they're sweet, I'm telling you. Let me go to the images right here so you, maybe I could see a set. And I, I'm telling you, the color, everything I use now is colored. Like I have colored hooks, I have colored floats on these Pompano rigs, and I use colored Sputnik uh, weights. But these are like the Pompano rigs right here. See them? Right here. These are excellent Pompano rigs, man. I, can I can't even go back to the cheap ones anymore after using these. So let's go and uh, let me show you the Sputnik weights that I use. So like I said, everything is colored that I use. All right, where's it at? Let's go back to Fish Gum. And I bought these when he had a customer appreciation week. And I ended up buying them for three fifty dollars a piece. Um, let me get to them here. Oh, he ain't even got them listed anymore on here. That's crazy, man. Um, I wish I could show you them. I don't, I don't have them right here. They're out in the garage. They're, they're really nice. They're really sweet. They got the wire on the end and stuff like that. Let me get back to the main camera. They got the wire on the end of them. You know, the prongs, there's like four or five and they'll move up and down. And they're like six ounces, about that big. And it's colored. I got a red one, a yellow one. And I guess once they hit the sand, they fall down to the sand and that, those, prongs just bury themselves in the sand so the other ones that you could buy like at uh any tackle store around here that have the prongs to them those things get stuck and you have to have some serious muscles ask my sister to get those things out out it feels like you got a huge monstrous fish or these sputnik ones they don't do that they just because they're, they're thin wires that go down on the sand and they'll hold in place so when you're pulling in they just come right out um so they're really, really good. They're worth the money. I got them for three fifty a piece, but I think they're like six dollars and fifty cents a piece. And um, I just bought them on a. Uh... All right, Michelle, keeping up with the hackets. Go watch your movie and eat some popcorn. You need to make sure you get those things for Tim's head for the snoring. It shocks him every time he snores. <laughs> That'll be funny. Um. Yeah, I use my drone, man, I'm telling you, but it's, it's a pain. It really is. It's a risk, too, because that's a $1,500 drone, and if that line hits that propeller, that thing's going in the water. I do have a smaller drone that's about 600 bucks, but it's it'll fit in the palm of my hand, and it's not big enough to, to carry that much weight out there because usually I have an underwater camera on the line when I'm carrying it out there, so you got the big old 6-ounce six ounce, six ounce weight, you got the underwater camera that weighs probably more than the six ounce weight. Then you got the Salty's Pompano rig on there. And uh, so the little, little drone's not going to handle it. Plus, the little drone's not really good in wind, where the bigger drone, I could fly in 30 mile per hour winds. Small one, you don't even want to attempt it in 30 mile per hour winds. I use a small one for getting scenic shots when it's a nice 10 mile per hour wind. Because the bigger one's a little bit more intense to get it up and stuff. With a little one, you just unfold it, boom, and it's up in the air. So, I've yet to catch a big fish using my drone. I have caught uh, one time. 
I sent that thing way out there, almost spooled out the whole reel. And ended up bringing in a little freaking uh, hard head about that big. That was probably smaller than that. It was, it was a little small hard head. Uh, but I have caught whiting. And I think I caught one shark. Uh, Atlantic shark nose. Stuff like that. But right now, supposedly the jacks are supposed to be coming in. <clears throat> probably in the next couple of weeks or so. So using the drone may pay off. With some jacks because I heard don't remember where I heard it but I heard the bait fish that the jacks go after I can't remember what those things are called they're a little shiny kind of look like shad <clears throat> and they move in schools <clears throat> I heard they were moving in and usually when that moves in the big jacks move in behind them so <clears throat> all right who said good night oh my sister oh lord I saw your title for the video and was like, man, this guy's killing it. He got into triple digits. <laughs> no, that's what I spent. We go fishing. That, that includes the rooftop tent, the, the rooftop tent trailer, the welding for the trailer, the mods for the Jeep, all the fishing equipment, the new camera gear, the new computer gear, new drone. Uh, the list goes on. And the only reason why I know that is because I was doing my taxes. And when I first opened it up, put all my stuff in there, it said I owed 2,800 bucks. I said, how the hell do I owe 2,800 bucks? I, I mean, I don't make a fortune. And so I was like, oh, this ain't going to happen, man. I'm going to write all my stuff off that I bought this year. And so I started putting it all in there. And by the time the total come up, I was like, holy cow, I've spent that much. And uh, yeah, I've spent that much. There you go. How you say that? Menhagen? Is that how you say it? That's what's coming in. And so I I'll never forget this video. I I've been to the Port Aransas Jetty so many times. And I've always walked up on the surfside right there on the beach area just to check it out, right? And so um just to see what's out there, you know, and that's what I do. I remember I watched this video from Thresher Fishing, and he was going to the jetties. And the jetties were closed for construction, right? And he started to walk back, and all of a sudden he looked at the water, and he noticed things were blowing up out there, right? And it was a bunch of those menhagen, just a big old bait ball of those things, and there was jacks just swarming them, right? So of course he gets his pole, and I think he put a, I know he, I think he put a top water on there. I don't, I don't think he uses rooster popper, but he was using some kind of t top water. And as soon as it hit the water, he's bringing a big jack, and I'm like. This guy gets seriously lucky. If I would have showed up at that same point in time and the jetties were closed for construction, because I walked down there too and check out the water, um, I wouldn't have brought anything in. <laughs> Even if there was a bait ball exploding right there. No, I think I would have got something for the rooster popper though. Yeah. But, you know, fishing takes skill. You know, you got to know where the fish are. You got to be able to read the surf. Read, and I'm just now learning how to read the surf, thanks to uh, Nick Away or Nick over at Breakaway Tackle. I've been watching his little things where he shows you. I think he's got his wife point where you know where you should be fishing when the surf breaks and how to figure it out. I still haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm I'm watching and uh. That's what you got to do when you pull up a beach. A lot of people just pull up to the beach and they say, oh, there's the ocean. I'm going to throw my pole in there. So you need to really learn how to read the waves and know where the guts, know where the holes are, know where the, uh, what's the, some other things you need to know. You know, you got to know that stuff. That's how these guys catch fish when they go out there is they know where to put the line in. Just They just don't put it in anywhere. They literally go down Padre Island and they drive and drive and drive until they find the right conditions. And that sometimes is what I need to do. I really do. Uh, but it's learning, man. That's my favorite thing to do is surf fishing. It really is. Out of all fishing, surf fishing, I enjoy the hell out of that. Now, pier fishing, I used to do it when I was younger all the time. And uh, I'm not really set up for that. I'd have to get one of those nets where you pull the fish up, stuff like that. Um, but again, there's a lot of people shooting a YouTube video. 
It's really hard to do when there's a lot of people. Loving the gear looks good. Yeah, it's 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 coming around, man. I really need to start working on that rooftop tent trailer. But I've got some other things. Well, I'm still paying for the camping gear. Uh, not what I bought that I showed you guys, but all the other stuff that costs the most. You know, I'm still paying for that. Probably got another month and a half, and that'll be paid off. Um, but I've got... I'm, I need to get some new headlights for the Jeep. I need to get some new taillights for the Jeep. I need to replace all the lights because my light bars are not matching my headlights. And I just, one of my light bars went out. The one that was in the bumper is messed up. Just blinks and all that. So I ordered another one that should be here on Monday. And I was kind of trying to get like driving fog lights, like yellow lights. I wanted that so I can leave them on. And I couldn't find anything, but I did find yellow, like amber lights. And that should be here Monday. So hopefully this weekend I'll get it installed in the bumper. Um, yeah, you know, when we go fishing, I got to always remember that. I, oh, I need to remember that because I have caught fish and just right there and, and a little bit above your ankle. I mean, and I just sometimes I forget about that. I just want to get out there and cast, you know, and I'm about waist deep. But a lot of times, you're right. Those fish are right there in a foot, of, foot two feet of water right off the beach. And uh, that, that goes with being able to read the beach and be able to read the surf and know what's going on. I've seen them down by Fish Pass jetties where they're right there, right up against the first part of the jetties where you walk out. There's this little, like, it's kind of like a cove. And the water is only, it's probably two feet, two and a half feet deep. I've seen some big fish up in that area, smacking the bait in there. Uh, and a lot of them were ladyfish, but there was some big fish in. But yeah, first gut, yeah, you're right. And a lot of people make the mistake. They think the further you get it out, the bigger fish you're going to catch. When a lot of times, they're, they're right there within just a short little cast. But it's kind of getting yourself used to that, knowing that. That's what's hard to do. Unless I could see the water bowling up, I always want to try to get to the second cut for some reason. Um, I wish I could show you guys those weights I use, man, because they're, they're pretty sweet. They really are. Um, they're expensive unless you get them on sale, and I don't know when he's going to have the next sale, but they are really cool. Um, and like I said, I'm going to put it back on the screen real quick. For any of you guys that want to know what I use, and especially when I start camping, I'm going to start listing all the camping gear that I have on this website. It's Texas Beach Bum, TXBeachBum.com. I'll actually put a link in the chat so you can, uh, you can bookmark it or whatever for future references if you want to see what I use. Uh, it'll have all the baits that I use, like the fish bites, the different flavors that I use and stuff like that. Um, I believe it's got all my all my poles on here, too. Let me see. Saltwater lures, fishing line, braid and mono. The line that I use is here. Saltwater rod and reels. All right. I do have some new rod and reels that aren't listed on here yet. That as soon as I get time, I'm going to be upgrading them. But it shows you what I use right here. All you got to do is just click on it and then buy product. And if you got Amazon Prime, you're going to get free shipping. Um, now, these lures I used to use, I still have them, but I mainly use those in uh, fresh water. I don't really use those in salt water anymore. The ones that I use, now this one I had and I sold. This is what I caught that big old 32 inch trout right here on. I was using that one day. But I sold that because I don't use it that much. But these are the ones that I use the most. Right here. These Pen Battle 3s. Um, they're just freaking awesome. They really are. I like to watch the birds. Yeah, we go fishing. I, I haven't seen much bird action anywhere in a while. Uh, I remember the first year I moved down here. Man, you could see some areas where the birds were just pounding the water. Especially over there by the jetties. The Port Aransas jetties. You get there early in the morning, 
right as the sun's coming up, or if you get there right before the sun goes down about, I don't know, about an hour and a half before the sun goes down, you could see those birds. It, it, uh, nothing makes me more upset than birds hitting the water and you can't get to them. <laughs> That's what upsets me the most. All right, so these are, you know, this site has a lot of things. It's going to be updated with all the camping gear and everything I use. That way, when you guys see it in a video and you ask me, hey, where'd you get that? It's all going to be listed on this website. Now, I don't make hardly anything off this. Um, I may make a few dollars if it's a high dollar, hundred dollar item. I may make two or three dollars off the sale. But everything adds up after you get done at the end of the year. Uh, this year it didn't add up though, but you can see all the different lures that I use. Um, and this needs to be updated as well because I've got quite a few. Like this one here, I, I, I use this one. It's a Rapola. Uh, I use a lot of top water when I'm fishing a surf. All right. Let me get it back here again. Uh, Mega Mouse, I'm fixing to end here shortly. I'm a, I've been on a little bit longer. You know how live streams go. You're always on a little bit longer than what you expected. But there you go, guys. There's the website. If you want to know what I use, fishing, the poles, the uh, rod and reels, um, tackle. And then the camping gear will be added very soon, hopefully. Uh, I've only been fishing these waters for about seven years, and the weather has been very different been very different uh, these last two years yeah it has man it's been totally whacked out the wind surf has been really really bad you know and that's a big part of why i haven't caught as many fish as i usually do is is the surf every time i get ready to go out you know all my days off it, it's tore up it really is uh or there's something going on the first year i was down here it was amazing man well, you know that we go we go fishing where I told you to go that one time. You caught that big old trout and all those fish. I mean, you you could usually show up there every every time I'd show up there, I would catch fish off lures every time. And then it just all of a sudden, after that freeze, it just disappeared. And uh, so it has changed. It really has. I'm hoping this year that the the trout will will come back. They've had a year and hopefully they're bigger. And um, you know, hopefully I'll get into doing some different fishing. You know, I I do want to go different places. I really do. And um, you know, once I get my house, once I buy a house next year, uh, then I'm gonna really focus on a boat. Um but the house comes first. So uh, hopefully we can get out on the water and get some fish here on our camping trip. Um, well, or my sister ain't having no fish head soup. <laughs> so you guys got to tune in for that video, man, because you're going to see her eat fish head soup. And I told her she had to suck the eyeballs out of the fish. So for those of you guys that watch my channel, you know I pick on my sister and do think crazy things sometimes and get her to believe things. But um, it'll be the first time I've ever made fish head soup. And there's going to be some really cool cooking going on. And some really cool fishing, hopefully. Because we're going to be out there camping, so we don't have to come home. So we're going to fish at night and during the day. Uh, and I have not, I don't think I've fished at night down here since I've been here. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I bought, bought that big light bar that's in the side my, inside my Jeep. So I can light up the surf. So we're going to be doing some night fishing and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, there hasn't been, Tyler, there hasn't been any bait fish that I've seen in a while. I have not seen, I mean, I used to see schools of bait fish, and I have not seen them in the bays. Um, I've seen some one time in the bays. It was a big school of mullet. But I haven't seen that much bait fish around shore at all. So it's uh, something going on. But like I said, I'm starting to learn you know, how conditions affect fishing and how full moons affect fishing. And I've done a lot of research. And by the way, it's going to be a full moon when we go to that camping trip. So hopefully it's not going to affect the fishing as much as from what I've read. 
Um, they are, the reason why they say full moons are bad is because the fish tend to feed at night because there's more light. And therefore, during the day, they're full and they're not eating as much. So I don't know if that's true or not, but we're going to be out on the beach at night. So if they're feeding at night, then we're going to be fishing at night. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, guys, I need to end this stream. I've got to be up early in the morning and get back to work. I got four days of work, then I'm off 10 days. And uh, I'm thinking about taking the trailer out and testing it out, actually sleeping all night in the middle of Port Aransas with all those crazy people, all those crazy college kids or whatever, just for one night to test it out and make sure I got the right stuff in there and stuff. I may do that Tuesday or Wednesday night. Not this week, but next week during spring break. Uh, and then we got the big camping trip that we planned that's on the 18th. So look forward to those videos. And uh, as soon as I can get out there and get fishing, man, I was going to go out there today. But if you guys seen the surf, it was freaking bad. It was really bad. Uh, and it was really windy. So, Are you going to have merch? I can see some shirts with damn on them <laughs> uh i wouldn't buy any of the merchants on the the website right now i i had somebody to design a logo and stuff like that and that person i guess just vanished or whatever but i i have to have some time and i'm going to design my own shirts and my own logo for the hats and everything like that so i wouldn't get anything um let me pull it up real quick and show you guys i don't think there we go. Let's see what we got here. I think this is the generic stuff that when I first built this website that is on here. Um, I don't think I wouldn't do it. I mean, this is pretty cool right here. This little cup of fish thing. That's actually what's on the back of my Jeep. But I want to be able to design my own stuff. This is just kind of generic stuff. I mean, here's freaking coffee cup with my one LE on there. <laughs> um, so I want to be able to design things on my own. I do have, um, I haven't, where's the shirt set? Let me go back to the main page. The shirts that I got here are just basic, generic kind of stuff like this right here. I really want to do a lot better than that shirt, for example. Uh, so just give me some time and uh, I'll have some new stuff up on here. I've just been neglecting the website. I probably shouldn't have, but um, I wouldn't buy any merch right now. But someday I'm planning on having my own logos and stuff like that. So the, hopefully that answers your question. Now all the fishing stuff on here, you can get that. Now, these are pretty cool though. <laughs> The fish on the flip flops. But um towels are pretty sweet. Got the little fishing logo. The same thing that's on the back of my Jeep on the spare tire cover. It says Texas Beach Bomb YouTube or whatever. But that's about it on the merch, man. I just were really I wouldn't spend the money on the generic stuff like that. I'd wait until I get some really good cool stuff up there. All right, anybody else got any questions or anything they want to say before we wrap this live stream up? I don't know how long it's been right now, but um, like I said, man, appreciate you guys hanging in with me and stuff like that. It's been pretty rough, you know, when I got the COVID for two weeks and then um, the weather's just been, every time I've had a day off, the weather has been just terrible. And believe me, guys, I am bored. I love fishing. But I even love creating videos for you guys even more than fishing. So hopefully things will pan out and get some really good content. And hopefully you guys will enjoy the camping content because that's going to be a big part of the channel. Uh, eventually, someday, I'm going to take it all over the United States. Going to start in Texas first. Now, after this camping trip that we do, the next camping trip is going to be at the Frio River. So I'm actually going to fish the Frio River and I'm going to camp out there. And then the next one after that is going to be um, somewhere up near Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh, I think it's west of Fredericksburg. I can't remember the, the park that's up there. But I'm going to be hitting a lot of different places. And then 
hopefully I'm going to be uh, collabing with a couple of YouTubers and going to Houston and fishing up there, some canals and creeks and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, look forward to the camping stuff because it's coming and that's going to be a big part of the channel. So I hope you guys enjoy the videos that are coming your way, especially the camping. And uh, appreciate each and every one of you guys for uh, tuning in. And make sure that you hit that like button before you leave. And we will see you guys next live stream or next video. Appreciate you guys watching.